In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to transition between different screens and different scenes. There is no default scene manager built into the Corona SDK. Thankfully, Corona community member Ricardo Robber has produced an excellent module called the Director class that allows for easy transitioning between multiple screens, with each screen being represented by a separate Lua file. You can download the Director class by visiting the address given in the browser window here. Let's get started. Before you start coding, you'll want to be sure that you've copied the director.lua file from the director class download into the root of your Corona project folder. Ours is copied, so we're ready to start coding. Let's begin by loading the director module into a variable called director. Local director equals require Director. The Director class requires that we use a master group for all display objects, so we'll create a group called Main Group, though you can call it whatever you like. Local Main Group equals display dot new group. Now we'll code the heart of the Director class, the method that allows us to load the main screen. Local function main, end. Main group, colon, insert, open and close parentheses, director, dot, director, view. This lets us load the portion of the director module that will be responsible for changing screens. Now we'll call the change scene method in the director module with the argument of which Lua file we wish to load but without the .lua extension, here main.lua. Director, colon, change, scene. Open and close parentheses, and then a string, menu. So this will open the menu.lua file. We need to have this main method return true, so that it will properly return the menu. Return true. Finally, we'll call this main method so that it will fire upon load of the main.lua. Main open and close parentheses. If we were to open the simulator now, we'd get an error as we've not yet created the menu.lua file. Let's do that now. We'll start by creating a new file called menu.lua and we'll store it in the root directory of our project folder. File, new file, Empty file, menu.lua. Choose the project folder and finish. We'll be creating a menu for the game we developed earlier in the series, Orb Smasher. Within the menu.lua file, we'll begin by adding the following code module open and close parentheses, dot 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 comma package dot see all. This is to expose the module to the rest of the project. Function new open and close parentheses and within this function local local group equals display dot new group open and close parentheses return local group. The new method is required for each new screen and must be named as such. Do not change the name of this method. This method is executed each time a new screen is created. The group we've created, local group, will act as a storage container for all the newly created display objects. If we don't use this local group as a group for our display objects, the director module will not function properly in trying to transition screens. Each display object needs to be added to local group so that it can be loaded and unloaded properly by the director module. Local group, insert, BG. This is the background image. 
local group, insert, title. This is the title image. Local group, insert, play button, or play BTN. This is an image representing the play button. Local group, colon, insert, credits button. This is an image representing the credits button. We need to code a method for handling menu choices, so let's add an event listener to play button and credits button. Play underscore btn add event listener open and close parentheses. Touch change scene. Credits underscore btn colon add event listener open and close parentheses touch comma change scene. For touch handling, we're going to do something a bit different from our current practice of having the object that is listening handle its own event. Instead, we're going to create a single method to handle touch events on the menu, and then look to use the e.target object to get a custom property that denotes the scene to load. Let's start by adding a .scene property to both the play button and credit button objects. The value will be the same name of the file minus the .lua extension that we wish to load. Play underscore btn dot scene equals in a string game. Credits underscore btn dot scene equals in a string credits. Now we'll code the change scene function to call the director method change scene not to be confused with our own change scene method. Function change scene open and close parentheses with an E inside N. If open and close parentheses then N E dot phase double equals ended. Now within the condition director colon change scene open and close parentheses, e.target.scene. e.target represents the object that is listening. We're taking e.target and then accessing the scene property. So when play button is listening, we'll be loading in game, and remember that dot lua is part of this. When credits is listening, we'll be loading in credits dot lua. Let's take a look at what we have so far in the simulator. Now, if we click the play and credit buttons, nothing will happen. That's because we have not yet coded the game.lua or credits.lua files. Let's do that now. First, we need to add the necessary module line. Module, open and close parentheses, dot dot dot, comma, package dot c all. Second, we need to create the exactly named new function. Function, new, open and close parentheses, and. Third, within the new function, we need to create a display group that all content will be added to later and will be returned by the new function. Local, local group equals display dot new group. Open and close parentheses. Return local group. I've already got some code on the clipboard that I'm ready to copy and paste in order to save time. Before continuing, we must remember to add all display objects to local group. If we don't do this, the director module will not work. Local group, colon, insert, open and close parentheses, Cheeto Mosquito. Let's add a touch event listener to the image so that upon touching it, the user will be taken back 
to the menu. Cheetah Mosquito, colon, add event listener. Open and close parentheses, touch, comma, change scene. As we did before, we'll add a change scene function to handle the screen change. Function, change scene, open and close parentheses with an E in the middle, end. If E dot phase double equals ended, then end director colon change scene open and close parentheses e dot target dot scene this won't work quite yet we need to add the dot scene property to the cheetah mosquito object cheetah mosquito dot scene equals menu Let's test it out. We'll go to the simulator and relaunch. And let's touch the credits button. And there we have our credits.lua file. Now, if we touch the image, we're taken back to the menu. Now it's time to create game.lua so that when play is tapped from the menu, the game launches. We'll be using the Orb Smasher code from an earlier lesson. Once again, we'll go through the necessary steps to properly ensure that code in this file is properly loaded with the director module. First, we add the necessary module line, module, open and close parentheses, dot, 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 comma, package, dot, see all. Second, we create the exactly named new function, function, new, open and close parentheses, n. And third, within the new function, we need to create a display group that all content will be added to later and will be returned by the new function. Local, local group equals display dot new group, open and close parentheses. And we need to return this, return local group. I've got the entire Orb Smasher code ready to paste. There are some subtle changes to this version of the Orb Smasher code. First, there are different orbs, different in their style and different in their size. Visual scaling has also been added to the orb instantiation. The orbs start with an X scale and Y scale of 0.7, and then using the transition to function, scale to their full size. All of the win-loss code has been moved into the win-loss method. The variables at the top of the code have been turned into local variables scoped to the game.lua file. There's no need to expose them to the menu.lua or credit.lua files. We'll now look for all display objects and add them to the local group. There's display.text, local group. Insert display underscore text, and there's also countdown text local group. Insert countdown text, and there are also our orbs in spawn orb. Let's add that here at the bottom. Local group, insert, orb. Save it. And I think that's all of our display objects. We've got our orbs, the state, which is the display.text, and the countdown. Let's relaunch it. And now, 
we'll click play. And there are the orbs. We can hear the background music. And the orbs still have their functionality. So there's a win condition, and if we reload, we can get a loss condition. We'll just go a little bit slower. And there's the loss condition. Let's add code to the game that prompts the user to play again or head to the menu upon game completion. I've already got the code to create two images that will act as buttons that will display upon game end. One button will allow the user to play again. The other will take the user to the main menu. With these buttons, we'll set the is visible property to false and also set the alpha to zero. This will ensure the buttons aren't visible upon game load and also do not interfere with the user's interaction with the orbs during gameplay. Also, as we did with buttons in the menu and credit screens, we'll add a custom property called screen that stores the name of the screen to load if applicable. I've already got these changes loaded. I'll paste them now. Now, let's code the event listeners for these buttons and the method that will handle them. We'll place this at the bottom of the code. Before the return local group line, we'll type play again, add event listener, open and close parentheses, touch, change scene. Okay, and then we'll type back to menu add event listener touch change scene let's create the change scene function function change scene parentheses e and if E dot phase double equals ended then end. In case you didn't notice, the play again object has its scene property set to nil. So what we'll do is we'll test to see if the scene property exists. The reason that the play again scene property equals nil is because if the player touches the play again option, we want to reload the game and not necessarily load the scene again. If they touch the back to menu option, we'll take them back to the menu. So, within the change scene method and the e.phase ended condition, we'll type if e.target.scene, then load game again. Else, actually, not load game again, let's, that's incorrect. L load main menu because if the scene property exists that means that we're going to head to a different um, scene else if it doesn't exist then load game again end okay so the first condition is easy to take care of director colon change scene e dot target Dot scene. We'll save that. The second requires us to reinstantiate all of our variables and then call the timer perform with delay spawn orb line again. We'll copy that. And let's type out all of our variable instantiation. O equals zero. Time remain. equals 10 time up equals false total orbs equals 20 ready equals false the director class doesn't clear timers so we need to clear the game timer 
game tmr equals nil. We also need to clear the spawn timer. tmr equals nil. Finally, we'll need to call the spawn orbs function with a timer. And that's the same line as in line 131. We'll save it, and now let's test it out by going to the simulator and relaunching. Okay, and we'll touch play, and we can play the game. And let's see if we can get a win condition. And we've got our win condition, but notice that the menu didn't appear. Well, that's because we need to actually code it so that upon win or loss, the menu will appear. Let's do that next. Let's head to the win-lose condition. And regardless of win or loss, we want to display the menu options. So play again dot is visible equals true. Play again. Oops, let's do, sorry, back to menu, dot is visible equals true. And we'll have both of these fade in. Transition dot to, play again, comma, then open and close curly braces. Within the curly braces, time equals 500. This is milliseconds, so that's half a second. Alpha equals one. So over, a, over half of a second, the alpha property will transition from its current state, which is zero, to its new value, which is one. Copy that line and paste it and change the first argument to back to menu. So now when win or loss happens, the menu options will fade in. Likewise, we want them to fade out if either of the menu choices are selected. So choose both of those, play again and back to menu, copy it, and come down to change scene. And here under double equals ended, regardless if we are going to the menu or we're gonna reload the game, we want these things to happen. So I've pasted the um, code from the win loss and I'll change it to false. And also we'll want to set the alpha to zero. Play again dot alpha equals zero, and play again, oops, sorry, back to menu rather, back to menu dot alpha equals zero. We'll also want the music to stop playing, so we'll need to code that. Audio dot stop, soundtrack, and not only do we have to stop it, but we have to rewind it when we reload the level or we go back to the menu. Rewind, audio.rewind, soundtrack. Save it, and let's take a look at it. And relaunch, play. So let's try and get a win condition. And it fades in. And if we choose back, then the music stops. We're back at the main menu. So far, so good. Let's do it again. And this time, let's get a loss condition. All right, so we have the menu fade in again. And if I choose play again, notice how the previous orbs are still on the stage and now I have new orbs. That's a problem. We need to clear all of the old orbs before we can load the new ones. So let's do that now. Okay, so within the reinstantiation part of change scene, just before we call this line, which will call spawn orbs, we're going to create some code that will go through the entire local group, look for orbs that are remaining, if any, and clear them out so that new ones can be created. So first thing we'll do is go to the orb portion of spawn orb, and we're going to add a flag, orb.isOrb equals true. 
Actually, we don't need that, just say true. Okay, so this is critical for looking throughout the entire local group for orbs. Now, right above um, the timer line here within the change scene function, we'll type the following. For i equals local group dot num children comma one comma negative one do end. So what we're doing is for this variable i, which you'll see its use in a minute, uh, for the total number of children uh, within local group, that's the total num number of objects within the local group object, we're traversing the object backwards. That's what negative one does. So now we need to first test if the objects that we're currently on are orbs. If local group bracket i dot is orb. Remember that we set that property on the orbs. So if the object's an orb, then we need to do the following. Set its orb property to nil. So local group bracket i dot is orb equals nil. Then we need to remove it from the display. Local group bracket i colon remove self. And we'll save it. Let's go ahead and comment this block. So we're traversing the local group looking for remaining orbs. If present, remove them. Now we did this backwards because when you remove an object from a table, Lua will take the rest of the objects at, after that and shift them forward. So if we were to, to traverse this from beginning to end, we would remove an object and then get a nil error as the uh, for loop would try to traverse the um, table and then shifting was happening. So what we're doing instead is we're traversing the table from the end to the beginning. So that way the shift will happen and then we're working our way backwards and so there's no nil error that's going to be reported when we look for the next is orb. So that's a, that's a detail that's um, really subtle but very helpful when you're going to start removing things from the display is that you should uh, traverse tables in reverse order in order to remove them. And this also might seem to be a bit of a mystery. Why are we setting local.isOrb equal to nil? Well, in Lua, it is possible, as strange as it may sound, to have um, the object nil, but its property not. So it's a good habit to get rid of all of an object's properties and then to remove the object. And if we really wanted to be um, careful about it, we can then type local group i equals nil. Um, let's go ahead and leave that in. That's being very thorough about garbage collection here. Okay, let's save it and we'll test it out. Play. Let's see if we have any errors also. So we'll get a win condition that'll go through. Actually, let's get a loss condition because that'll force the garbage collection. If I choose play again, all of the previous orbs are gone and we start over again. So that's good. There's no errors. Okay, we'll go back to the main menu. And with that final code, we have a simple yet successful working game with a menu screen, a credit screen, and an in-game menu that allows for replay of our game or return to the main menu. For a small fee, you can download the project files for this tutorial at cheetomosquito.com.